Hello, it's Laura McCarry here again at The Hidden Edge with another tea break tip on how to use business models and tools to help you manage your growing business. Today we're looking at Gareth Morgan's eight organisational metaphors, really useful for identifying what is the underlying culture of your business. Sometimes what we think is our culture isn't necessarily what's coming through. And this gives us a wonderful opportunity to look into, uh, in, a, in a fairly safe environment, an exercise that gives us the opportunity to work through what actually people think about us. So let's have a look at what Morgan describes as his eight metaphors. Gareth Morgan suggests that organisational cultures can be represented as a series of metaphors. The eight cultural ones that he identified were machine, and this is based upon efficient, standardised and controlled procedures with each unit operating like a cog in a wheel. Very Tayloristic. The organism is like a living system with a life cycle of birth, maturity, death and a matter of survival of the fittest. Brains a learning environment which is involved with information processing with an emphasis on knowledge, intelligence and feedback. It often is very systematic. The values is a values based organisation has an emphasis on tradition, beliefs, history and a shared vision. It is quite often quite extremist. Political systems is a culture based on preservation of interests and rights with hidden agendas and alliances. The psychic prisons represents the culture in terms of conscious and unconscious feelings of repression and, and regression. It's also when you're kind of blind to what else might be out there. Flux and transformation. This sees the culture as a whirlpool of change, sometimes beneficial, but sometimes chaotic and paradoxical. And then there's the instruments of domination. And this represents a culture that is underpinned by naked aggression, compliance, exploitation, and the imposition of values. Gareth Morgan argues that metaphors create windows into the soul of the organisation and they allow us to see, understand and imagine the organisation in different ways. So how might we use this? I've drawn up a grid here. If you put this grid on a large full scale paper and print out the images, you have a, the start of a formula to allow people to start to discuss what machine or organism or brains, values, political systems, maybe psychic prisons, flux and transformation, inst instruments of domination means to them. And this is where it's really important. Because what I perceive as a machine organisation may not necessarily be what my colleague sees as a machine organisation, or indeed the boss might, or my subordinate might. I love these exercises where you can rank different uh, words or, or pictures in order to get the consensus of opinion. The important thing is, is drawing out the information from, from the, uh, the participants. And that may well be that you move this particular uh, position of the organisation to another position and argue until such times as you get a consensus of opinion. The whole discussion brings out an awful lot of underlying information about the cultures within your organisation that you may not have been aware of in the first place. Another alternative to 
these particular pictures and these descriptions is to give a blank piece of paper to each member of staff and for them to draw their own metaphors of how they see the organisation. That way you can elicit a description and an under, um, ask the questions to get an understanding of what their metaphor means to them, to them and deal with the issues that the metaphor reveals in the description of it in the real world. If you're uncomfortable with ambiguity and emotion, then Morgan's metaphor exercise may not be for you. However, it can throw up some valuable insights. And if you want to have a go, then go to the Hidden Age website and download the templates there. And if you've done it before, then share your stories of how this particular exercise has worked for you. I'm building a portfolio of case studies and would love to include yours as part and parcel of it. So until next tea break time, enjoy the rest of this one.